Hello, hope you are all having a blessed day. Today I would like to talk about codependency, and how to break free from the snares of evil people. An evil person can be described by stating that evil starts in the heart, whatever is in a person's heart will then come out of their mouth. A heart filled with evil, will produce evil thoughts, behaviors, actions, and reactions. Listen closely to what people say to you, what they say is a clear indicator on whether or not they come from God, or come from Satan. No need to allow that person to stay in your life long enough for you to start seeing evil behaviors, as soon as you start hearing worldly evil talk, run away from them, and don't look back. Codependency, in most cases, was learned in early childhood during the stages of character development. Becoming codependent was a defense mechanism that was adopted to guard against negative influences that we did not have control over. As I have stated in a previous video, narcissism and codependency are the same in terms of why we either become a full-blown narcissist or a full-blown codependent empathic person. I must state that being an empathic person doesn't necessarily mean you are codependent, you can be codependent and not be an empathic person, likewise you can be an empathic person, but not be codependent. Being empathic means you are able to put yourself in other people's shoes, and feel what they feel. Empathic people absorb others' emotions internally, and in turn are constantly seeking to help others. A codependent person relies on someone else's validation for everything, they rely on other people's approval in order to do anything, and they tend to try and be people pleasers. For the sake of this video, when I say an empathic person, I am referencing the codependent empathic person that left an abusive relationship. Codependent behaviors are a defense mechanic that is learned before we were old enough to develop our own unique personality, and before we could learn what healthy boundaries are. Codependency is learned through living in an environment of bad parenting, consistent emotional and or physical abandonment, verbal assault and gaslighting, spiritual abuse, physical assault and or rape, and it is learned because you were a child, and did not know how or could not defend yourself. Through living in this environment long enough, a child will develop CPTSD. They will not trust anyone, and tend to cut everyone off from themselves, and in some cases the child will cut off all emotions, and reactions. This is not good, because eventually these emotions will surface in many different forms, either it being in the form of narcissistic behaviors, or in the form of codependent behaviors. Learning narcissistic behaviors is truly the only way to thrive in an abusive environment. That is for them to become worse than their abuser in order to control the one that abuses them. That is the same as bully the bully by being the biggest, baddest bully in the home. The learned empathetic codependent behaviors lead to always giving up or compromising everything you know, and believe in order to keep the peace. This leads to a child being raped in every sense of the word, that is mentally raped, verbally raped, emotionally raped, spiritually raped, and in some cases even physically raped. In a sentence, your childhood is stolen from you by loving the ones that claim to love you, and promise to protect you from harm. So. Hopefully you can understand why narcissists feel powerful, and strong, it is not because they actually feel that way, but is because they have extremely low self-esteem, as well as an empathic person has extremely low self-esteem as well. The narcissist and the empathic person can both become codependent. But only the narcissists can be abusive. This leaks over into their adult life. The empathic person usually leaves their home of origin, and seeks after peace, and begins to try and find real love. But if for whatever reason they cannot leave their home of origin, they will tend to try and find someone that will save them from their environment. Narcissists on the other hand do not try to leave their home of origin, and only seeks to be the head of their household through all the forms of the narcissist's bag of manipulative tricks and lies. In a sick way, the narcissist feels like they are smarter, and better than everyone else because they have managed to not only survive in abuse, but become the dominating master of their environment. The narcissist deep down, wants to find peace and love outside their home of origin. But the narcissist's definition of peace and love is domination and control. What they are truly looking for, 
is to dominate and control others in order to bolster their false facade of being all-powerful, and all-knowing. They know exactly how to put others below them, and they do it in such a way as to make everyone around them feel as if they are the one responsible for hurting them, and causing all the pain and misery that came into their lives. Narcissists are codependent on an empathetic person or other narcissists, because they need a fresh supply of victims, or monkeys in order to project their ego onto. They need to keep up their practice to feel like they are an almighty warrior sent to earth from another galaxy, or whatever fantastical imaginary ego they have. They need to bolster that ego, by any means necessary. They are cursed to being codependent for a very different reason than an empathic person's reasons are for being codependent. We are codependent on always seeking after the love we never received as a child. We unknowingly seek after the same exact abuser as the abuser in our childhood, and we do this hoping that we can finally close that deep wound, and feel loved, and to feel that we are worthy of love. It all stems from feeling worthless, and not being in a healthy environment to ever have learned how to have a healthy sense of who we are, develop healthy boundaries, and figure out where we fit into this life. Neither of us have a healthy view on what relationships are. Neither of us have healthy self-esteem. So when a narcissist and an empathic person meet, it is a match made in hell. It is a vile poisonous cocktail that will become the perfect storm of destruction. We unknowingly attract this destruction in our lives, all because we just wanted to feel worthwhile, and that our existence matters in this life. When we first meet the narcissist we feel this wild rush of emotions that we think is magic. We think thoughts of, it's meant to be, we were made for each other, or we think, oh, it's like I've always known you. This is not magic, but you have always known them. This is the familiar spirit entering into your life. This is how a familiar spirit feels. It feels, familiar to someone that you have known before, but can't seem to put your finger on who it is. So we tend to brush it off, and adopt to the fantasy way of thinking about what love is. This, I assure you, is, not, love. What are we told in God's word about spirits that feel familiar? We are told not to believe every spirit, but to test the spirits to see whether or not they come from God. We are told again to examine everything carefully, and to hold fast to that which is good. What does the narcissist ultimately do? Are they not trying to teach you things about yourself that are all lies? Are they not considered false prophets? Examine the scriptures daily, to see if these things are true. Those things being lies that the narcissist feeds us on a daily basis. The only way to counter their attacks, is to be reading our Bible daily, and praying daily. Now, do you understand why the narcissist was so jealous of your relationship with Christ? As long as you are near to God, and relying on Him for all of your needs and comfort, the narcissist's lies look like what they actually are. Lies from Satan and his demons. That is why the narcissist must keep you so emotionally messed up at all times. They pull you away from God by constantly attacking, getting you to start focusing on their problems instead of focusing on God and the real problems at hand. The problem is not that you do not listen enough, do not care enough, or are too sensitive to their evil way of treatment. No, the real problem is that you compromised everything you believe in order to appease the narcissist. You compromised everything in the hope that the narcissist would follow through on their promises, which they do not ever do. Instead, they sit around constantly scheming, and plotting ways to keep you confused, and hurting. The narcissist thinks that in order to keep you in the relationship, they must keep you solving problems that never existed. For they cannot rest until they have done evil, they are robbed of their sleep until they make someone stumble, and fall. Psalm 7, verse 14, they conceive evil, they are pregnant with trouble, and give birth to lies. Psalm 36, verse 4, they lie awake at night, hatching sinful plots. Their actions are never good. They make no attempt to turn from evil. Psalm 52, verse 2, all day long you plot destruction. Your tongue cuts like a sharp razor, you're an expert at telling lies. 
The Lord says in Malachi, Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it, because it is in the power of their hands. They are cursed to only ever committing evil works. Proverbs 6, verses 14 through 19. Who plots evil with deceit in his heart, he always stirs up conflict. Therefore disaster will overtake him in an instant, he will suddenly be destroyed, without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who powers out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. The narcissist is already defeated, as long as you stay close to God. Do not compromise your faith, and what you believe. If you stand firm, and hold fast to the truth, the devil will flee. The narcissist will run away from you. You are unequally yoked, therefore, let them run away, and do not go after them no matter how bad your low self-esteem wants you to. Do you have enough scripture memorized in your arsenal to defend yourself? Do you know enough scripture to go on the offense if the need arises? Do you know who you are, child of God? Do you realize you have a father that not only created the universe, but created you perfectly in his image? He knitted you in your mother's womb, he formed you, and made you perfectly, and God does not make mistakes. Do not seek to be friends with this world, for this world is passing away, along with everything in it. To be friends with this world is to become the enemy of God. You cannot serve two masters in this life. Either God is your master, or the narcissistic evil world is. You will hold to the truth of one, and hate the other. Make your choice, make your stand. I promise you this, when you stand on what is true, the world will hate you for it, and they will constantly try to get you to fall. Don't go with them, they serve Satan and his demons, not your father in heaven, the king of the universe. The only way to break the curse of codependency is to become codependent on God Almighty, and to fully reject anyone and anything that does not line up with his truth or his will. Do you get what I'm saying to you brothers and sisters? Do you understand what you must do to break this curse of running into more and more evil people that cause nothing but destructive misery in your life? Read the word of God daily, show yourself approved, rightly discerning the truth from lies. The blessed assurance of your faith will give you the self-esteem to break free from being codependent to this evil world. God is your strength and your refuge. Listen to these verses from Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. If you draw near to God, he will protect you, his truth will be your shield, and buckler. Do you know what a buckler is? It is a small round shield used for parrying, and deflecting enemy attacks. Think about that for a minute. His truth will not only protect you, but will enable you to counter the enemy's attack and deflect it back onto them. Isn't that amazing? And all you have to do is to truly know God's truth. As for that, I will leave that job up to each and every one of you to do. There is no way I can make anyone understand God's truth, but my hope is that I can inspire you all to seek after him. I truly hope that this message will give you the tools, and the ability to break the codependent curse in your life. It is my prayer that you will draw closer to our loving, caring Father in heaven, and understand that only his love is real in this life. Only through Christ can you truly find hope, real love, and a new life where you no longer suffer from destructive thoughts, PTSD, and all other forms of evil that enslave people. These evils come from Satan and his demons. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, 
dwell on these things. I will be praying for you, and if you have a prayer request, please leave them in the comments. Until next time, put on the full armor of God, pick up your sword daily, keep fighting the good fight, and remember brothers and sisters, you are not alone. When you go, I really know I can live.